All righty, thank you for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays. We are doing our usual uh, open office hours with the ACF team every other week, um, which we record here and put on YouTube. And we do a blog post on the ACF website as well um, with a catch up generally around the questions that were asked and the answers and, and all the links that we talk about. So you can catch up if you don't ever um, make it. Uh, today we have got Damon again from DevRel. Oh, actually, let's go around. We've got Mike from Content. We've got Matt, Brian, Anthony, and Phil from the engineering team. And we've got Damon Cook from um, DevRel at WP Engine. And Damon's here today to do uh, another demo after the success of like two weeks ago. He did a Blocks API uh, demonstration using that with ACF. And um, we had some questions around the interactivity API. So that's what Damon's going to do today which is great. Um, I don't think I've got a huge amount of Roundup ACF news, unlike last time where it just kept going on. Uh, we are still in the middle of um, ACF 6.3, the release. We released the beta, uh, beta 1 uh, a week or so ago uh, that is out and it's available for, for you to test. And that's an ACF Pro beta. So if you're a pro customer, you can go to your account go to the downloads and you'll be able to download it um, from where you get the zip in, in the My Account Licenses section. Um, and to install the, install the beta, you just need to um, install the zip as you would do a normal plugin. You can test it wherever you'd like. Obviously, we um, would recommend not doing it on production installs that are critical, um, but please give it a really good kick of the tires and let us know. Um, and we're hoping the 6.3 will be coming soon. Um, I don't think we've had anything too major from the beta. So we are, fingers crossed, it, it will be with everybody shortly. And then we'll be turning our attention to 6.4. Uh, OK, so we will also have the uh, the, the Q&A, which I've now lost the button for, uh, is available if you want to ask questions, either ACF related or specifically about Damon's demo. And we can answer those as we go along or just feel free to use the chat feature if Q&A isn't available on Zoom for you. Uh, yeah, so feel free to drop questions as you go. Anything that you want us to tackle and we can we can go, we can help. Uh, and I'm just gonna post a link to the, no, that is the wrong chat. Let me find the chat and Zoom. This is the public feedback board on the ACF website, so we take feature requests, improvements, suggestions, um, and you can go and see what other people have, have suggested and voted on. So if another feature or bug or improvements there that you feel strongly about, give it a vote and we can, it helps us prioritize our roadmap. Um, so we just, yeah, wanna hear from you about what's what you need improved. Uh, and then I think, yeah, I think let's, let's take it away, Damon. Alrighty, let me get my screen shared. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Cool. Let's see. All right, let me get my chat open too. Now that I have everything rearranged. Okay. Howdy, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to walk us through um, using the new interactivity, well, yeah, newer interactivity API that was publicly available in WordPress 6.5, which came out what, early April. So um, while this uh, whole API has been in development for a couple years, really, but um, it's now publicly available and has actually pretty, really good, actually, uh, documentation. So I'm going to drop, yeah, I dropped a link to kind of a great post on the Make Developers blog. Um, this is a great overview. So if I go too fast today, I would definitely come back here and maybe go through some of this stuff. And then um, I'll be kind of tying it into using like an ACF block and then also using um, ACF, I'll be using a relationship field with the, with the associated with the user. So um, what, let's see, 
hopefully you've possibly also seen this as a kind of a um, de facto, I guess, demonstration of what you can do with the interactivity API. Um, this is wpmovies.dev. Um, I highly recommend checking that out. And you can also uh, go peruse the code base if you go down at the footer here and uh, open that up in GitHub and see how all their blocks are developed. And I actually took a lot of inspiration for kind of the stuff I'm demoing today because um, we're going to do a similar idea with liking um, items. So let's kind of hop into it, I guess. Um, here's my demo site over on the right. And I just wanted to show what I had activated here. I have ACF Pro 6.2.9. Um, this is a custom plugin, which will step through and has all my functionality. And then I'll just have user switching so I can kind of demonstrate when we get near the end when uh, if we want to switch uh, different users so I can demonstrate some stuff. So that's about it. And then I have the 2024 theme activated. Um, and so just to show what we're kind of going to build and walk through real quick, let me move this bar over. Um, so here's the front end of the site. It's kind of typical. I don't know. I made very light customizations to 2024, just some colors. But if we hop over to this listens area, um, we have these hearts. So I'm logged in as admin. So when I go to any of these items, I can uh, like them. And even if I click into them and like them here or unlike them, and it actually all saves. Let's open up a new tab here to my profile. It all updates all this information on my profile and saves it in this. Um, um, this is, yeah, a relationship field, ACF relationship field. So I can also, you know, add items here and have them update on the front end as well. So vice versa. So that's the interactivity kind of we're going for. So how do we get there? Um, I already, I don't, I didn't want to, just for the sake of time, I didn't want to um, run some of these commands, but this is all in that quick start guide on the documentation here. And I'll drop that link as well. Um, but yeah, uh, this is just to create a block with the interactivity API, like, already integrated, there is a template for the create block package. Um, so at the end of this command here, you see template and it's a create block interactivity or interactive template. So that'll spin up a block and a plugin for you to kind of get started and get exploring with the interactivity API. So I already did that, um, but these are, yeah. So these are the commands basically that I already ran and got set up for us. So you wouldn't have to watch me download a bunch of node uh, modules during this live demo. Um, so the heart of the code here to jump through things, I have just uh, down at the bottom here, I have um, NPM start running on our ACF likes plugin, just watching for our block changes. Um, but this is the kind of the heart. Let me collapse this sidebar because I know it gets a little uh, in the way here. But this is a kind of typical, uh, you know, plugin code. Um, we're registering a single block here and we're registering. Yeah, we're pointing to our build directory where, where the block is being built to. Um, and then I can come back to this later, but I'm using a block hooks to insert our like our custom like button block after a post title on a single block template. So I'll come back to that in a little bit, but that's how I'm in injecting kind of our block where we want it on that one template. And then we just, I'm going to be using some good old Ajax to process the requests of liking and unliking for our example. And that's just kind of our submission, um, our server side logic to handle uh, the, resp the response and submission and everything. So um, to step into our, so all that's really the remainder of the, the majority of the code is this block the like button. So 
um, hop into there. Um, the block.json defines everything about our block. Hopefully you're somewhat familiar with that. I won't go in depth on this, but um, yeah, we're just giving it a name uh, and our title description, and then we're including our ACF entry that allows us to uh, set the where our template is for our final um, logic, which is mostly which is all the front end logic in our in our case. But when you start using the interactivity API, this is kind of where um, the requirements come in. Um, this is actually, this is ACF, but this entry here under supports, um, usually in your block.json, you need to have this entry definition. Um, and then the interactivity API uses um, JavaScript modules. So this is a newer entry in the block.json to point to our view.js, which is where our um, blocks interactivity store and kind of all our uh, custom uh, logic will be for the interactivity piece, uh, the client side that is. And then I'm pointing to, this is a newer entry too, but not this is not a requirement. This is just, um, this will pull in a CSS file for the front end only. Um, and then we're passing uses context, which is the post ID, which we'll see in a second when we get into the logic. Uh, I think that kind of covers the block.json. And then really the two pieces that I'll step through is this render.php and then the view.js. That's kind of the two biggest pieces that are handling things. Um, for our case, we only want our heart, our like, icon functionality for logged in users. So we have a little uh, escape hatch there, just checking. And then we kind of just start stepping through our logic here. Um, we're checking for our field, our ACF field, like songs, and it's associated with a user. And, um, and then we're populating um, state with some of this information as well. So uh, we pull in some of these um, variables and um, stuff that we set up above. And using this, uh, this is documented in um, as part of the interactivity API, but this is one of the functions, the server functions that we can use to define state. Um, and you just want to pass a namespace. So we're using WP like button and passing in all, all passing along all our stuff. And then this is kind of, you know, good old HTML, PHP logic here. Um, but the one, again, kind of re requirement for like hooking up the interactivity API is um, using these directives, but specifically this uh, WP interactive directive um, with our namespace, this kind of, um, to use it loosely, hydrates, but also says this block and everything inside will be interactive. So this is a kind of a key component and requirement to your block that you'll want to uh, include. And then this, these types of items, the data WP, uh, and then there's a bunch of different directives, which is in the documentation. Um, these are where we're defining custom uh, attributes and passing um, information back and forth from our store, which is in the view.js. Um, so this is a kind of a convention data.wp. And then um, all these different items, we have context in it, uh, on click and some class toggling. Um, and again, all these directives are yeah in the documentation. I'll provide a link if somebody already it hasn't beat me to it by the end. Um, context is we're passing along the where we pass along the post ID, and I'll show that in a second in our store and when we get into the view.js. But the rest of this is kind of pretty. We got an SVG icon and then a button. Um, and if there's any questions, drop them in chat or the Q&A. I can stop at any point. Um, but let's see, I'll hop, I'll keep going and hop into the view.js file. 
All right. So we pull in the store and there's a few other um, critical items we can pull in as we need them, but we're just using uh, store and get context from the interactivity package. Um, this is where we're pull pulling in our CSS. And then this is kind of the heart of the um, interactivity client side functionality. Um, again, where you reference our namespace for that we defined in this uh, interactive um, directive here. So those should match. Um, and we're destructuring kind of the, the state and actions from our store. And this is getting some checks in place to see based on the user's post meta, if, um, if it's already an item that's been liked, then um, just kind of uh, pass some information back to uh, the server side stuff and, po well, and populate that. And then here are our actions for toggling. So this is actually tied to um, actions toggle like here. So this is the on click uh, directive. And so we're toggling like, um, and we're pulling in the context, which, cause we need the post ID. So uh, we're just doing some other, uh, you know, <laughs> logic. I won't walk through every line of code here, I guess, but if we, you know, if the item um, is already liked, then we kind of, uh, we'll remove it from their likes because they're, yeah, they're toggling it on and off and we're doing some logic based on that. And then we trigger this update user likes, which does our submission for us. Um, and this is where, yeah, we're doing passing along the Ajax URL and all our information with like the nonce to for security and the action. And then our, um, array of liked songs. And that's kind of comes back to the initial uh, plugin file here where we uh, are handling the information on the server side. So we check our nonce for security, get the user ID, uh, like songs, and we update the ACF field information. Um, yeah, I feel like I went really fast through that, but Let's go back and let me demonstrate kind of uh, again how some of this works. Our field groups. Um, I actually pulled this uh, logic out into the plugin itself, but um, since this is still available, then we can see how this field is set up. We have a field group liked songs. Um, it's a relationship field. It's tied to the song post type. Um, and then we just filter by published items. And we're for location rules down here at the bottom where current user is equal to logged in. That's what we're using for our location. So again, this hooks up uh, everything over here in our profile area. So we can add and remove items and this will sync with the front end logic as well. So I'll remove that and update and Go back here. Let's see, what did I just, what do we have in here? Three items. Let's actually, let's remove all except for one, this random one, just to get an idea. And there is actually, this is ironic. I think there's something in my logic for the state logic is not, uh, wait, oh no. Did I update? Yeah, I think I saved that. That's probably part of the issue. There we go. So there's that one item uh, remaining. Check over here. Yep. So we only have one item that we like. And then to go back to why I had that other plugin, the user switching, I have a few other users here with different roles. So we can actually kind of uh, masquerade here as another user and just show, um, I may have already liked some of these. No, I guess not. So. We can, now we're a different user. We can like some items and then we can open up our profile and verify that those items are associated. Yep, 
So those are our two items that we just liked. Uh, we could add another one, update profile. And there we go. So that meta information is uh, syncing <laughs> um, between client side and server, server logic and all that good stuff. Um, questions <laughs> that went fast. I'm happy to step into anything uh, deeper too if I went <laughs> way too fast. Hey, Damon, uh, Phil here. Um, yeah. This is my first real look at the interactivity API actually. So um, thanks for, for doing this. But um, one of my questions, I guess, is what's the advantage of this as opposed to just doing like old school jQuery and Ajax calls? Is there something about this that um, lets two blocks sync together better or? Yes, uh, absolutely. You kind of touched on it there. Um, you can certainly build with all those, you know, good methods, jQuery, Ajax, anything. Um, the idea with the interactivity API is creating, you know, certainly standardization and also, um, yes, allowing different uh, blocks to communicate with each other on the page, but also um, the idea of route. I know they're exploring more of the idea of routing. So, it has more of a kind of single page app feel, um, but that's a little further along and I think on the API roadmap, um, you know, well, it's, they're actually working on it now, but I don't know what, how far the progress will be, but so, yeah, I, I think it's, it's mostly standardization and it's having less in theory, you know, less JavaScript, less client side stuff that's going to need to be pulled in for all your blocks to communicate amongst each other. Um, and really just kind of having the, the mechanics, um, what's the word I'm looking for, but just like the standard, uh, like a base or a foundation, I guess, like a shared. Yeah. Just the, you know, a common language kind of in a way, like looking at I mean, if you start looking at any of the interactivity blocks that are out there, you'll see definitely, you know, this is it's pretty standard boilerplate kind of code, you know, this actions and state destructuring and, right. you know, all this stuff. So that kind of, I think, just creates less like, you know, dissonance for developers to kind of hop back and forth and even copy pasta their code, you know, and say, oh, right. this is how this works. Uh, let's grab this and piece and bring it in. Um, but yeah, great cool. question. Um, and I, it might just mean I have to dive into it more myself, but um, is there a way for me to like, from a different block, grab the state from another block and do something, you know, like- Yes, yeah. Okay. And I didn't make it that far, but I was hoping to. Yeah, sorry if that's out of scope for this uh, tutorial. No, I, I highly recommend uh, this. Yeah, this movies demo they have, especially if you go. Uh, whoops. Dot, well, actually, that's a good spot, but they're showing here um, how they do their like kind of functionality, and this is actually using multiple blocks to communicate with each other. Um, so if you uh, go back, let's see. I think it's a little easier to see sometimes. Um, so you can go into any of these movies and well, yeah, we can like it here, um, but it's also updating this block count up here. So that's kind of like a, a different block that they're communicating with each other, right? Right. So if we keep continue, um, you know, getting that count there. So that's a that's a good example. And that's kind of what they are outlining in this documentation over here, how they did that. Um, and they have the block code in there as well. So cool. That was kind of a next step for me was to get that count on the page, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> make it that far. No, it's cool. It's good. Uh, that, that gives me more to 
yeah, just to like understand the purpose of this, I think, and and where to dive in next. So yeah. Yeah, and just to actually speak to that a little bit more is um, you know, I had this in my block, but this WP interactivity state is kind of the heart of where you would have your blocks communicate because this is, can be a shared state. You would really just reference this uh, namespace and then you can pull in any of these items in a different block in your uh, store logic. So that's kind of the heart of it. And then the other idea is like context. Yeah, I think I touched on, yeah, I had my post ID as well in, in the block. But so for WP context, that's kind of like a, essentially like a, my understanding, like a localized state, right, of just that element. So anything that we're kind of passing down in here will just be kind of localized to this uh, this block itself. So hopefully that made sense. Yeah, I think so. I'm uh, slowly wrapping my brain around it. The, this is oh, cool. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> So much yeah. to As we all are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Damon, we had a question from Ian Atkins in the QA. What scripts are loading on the front end when you use the API? Um that's a great question. I it's probably since we're using uh modules, let's see, I guess we can pull this up and see. But I mean, so just to step back a little bit, the interactivity ABI is using Preact um, and modules. So in theory, when you import the interactivity API package, you're just importing the module. And so um, that would persist kind of on the page. Um, trying to think here. Yeah, I guess we can actually use view source and see. Let's find the view.js first. Oh, and this is terribly small. <laughs> um, yeah, scroll that over. Yeah, so you can see the import map here for the interactivity API. This is, uh, you know, where it's pulling in the package stuff, and then we're adding our script and, um, Depending how your theme configuration site setup is, I th think the default experience is this would, you know, this would only be loaded on pages where this block is included. As this, in and when I say that, I mean the the module and the view script as well. Um, and so, and the same thing with that view.css. Um, so that's kind of a, a performance consideration and a kind of a benefit in a lot of ways, but you have to know kind of how that stuff is um, working. But yeah, by I think the default experience is, yeah, this is only loaded when the block is on the page, unless you had the, what is it, the uh, should, I forget what the, the filter is um, that you can opt into or out of the should load separate assets or something like that. <laughs> so hopefully that answered the question, but anything follow up, happy to clarify or attempt to. Yeah, cool. Thanks very much, Damon. Sure. Damon, I might have missed it when you were going through the uh, what plugins you had installed, but you, it looks like you've obviously got the Gutenberg plugin there. Is that is that a requirement for this, or is this just because you you're using sort of like bleeding edge stuff? Yeah, no, not at all. And I was just about to when we hopped on, I was about to act deactivate that. Um, I just like to yeah explore with it activated, but it is not at all um, for everything I just showed. It'll all function fine. Yeah. Oops. Um, the one thing that I was testing out because let's see, there's a new feature in the experiments that I wanted to, to test out is the, the full page client side navigation, which is still an experiment. So I was just kind of messing around, seeing how that affects the interactivity API, which I don't, I'm still not clear on how it certainly makes things faster. 
Um, no, I think I have to. Huh. Oh, my song. Did my songs disappear? I feel like, uh, yeah, when I clicked in, I thought I had the songs appearing. Oh, maybe it was the temp. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So it was a matter of. But yeah, that's the only reason I had it installed was to experiment with some stuff. Cool. Any other questions? There's tons of great uh, resources out there. Um, I highly recommend, you know, the, the WordPress developer blog. This is a great walkthrough. You can create the steps you through creating like a um, calculator. And then uh, Ryan Welcher, um, a developer advocate with Automatic, has does Twitch streams. Um, and he's got a lot of stuff on GitHub uh Ryan yeah so there's a lot of stuff you can dig around in his uh I think it's yeah Twitch and the block developer cookbook is another one I think he created a slider recently yeah block developer cookbook.com um and then if you go into recipes I think custom image block style where's the yeah, interactivity API slider. So he walks you through um, creating a slider here. So that's another another one to look at. Um, I guess from like a uh, an ACF perspective, the um, all the ACF code was was PHP side, right? Like, there's no nothing specific. Um, ACF. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I yeah, guess with even, the, oh, sorry, Damien, you go. No, I was just going to point out, even in theory, because um, a lot, I mean, one of the interesting considerations, I guess, with a lot of these blocks is I didn't really touch on the abstraction of like, you know, you can have the editorial experience as well, which would, um, our considerations. Cause like right now let's show if I go in edit site, um, you know, this is kind of what the editor, you know, admin or whoever's editing this page would see. That's not as elegant. I didn't spend too much time styling it, but, um, so yes, there, there are different ways to, to think about that. Um, I didn't go that far to, to handle all that logic, but you know, I think this is kind of uh, for a lot of interactivity blocks. I feel like this is a, an adequate experience in a way for an editor. You know, they can either add or remove this block. They don't really need to <laughs> like from this editor experience, I don't think. Um, so, and with that being said, I'm trying to think. Um, I was going to kind of also, I, I'd be happy to step through the the block hook stuff, if if that's interests anybody, how that is interjected in in kind of the template. But I want to be cognizant of time. So yeah, I was just going to say, Damon, as well that I guess, and and to Phil's question around the the connection with the ACF stuff, that the way that the ACF blocks are built and have been since. 6.0 i think when we moved to the block.json system piggybacking off you know the block.json format we get all of this stuff for free and it works um it works with what wordpress are doing like block bindings the um although obviously it needed a bit of work from our side to make that compatible but the interactivity api the block hooks so it from a like how does this work with acf it's it's almost it depends on the use case but because we inherit everything from block.json we can everybody can take advantage of it with an acf block or a native block so it's kind of it's not Definitely. not thinking about it, it differently for acf it's just well you can do this with acf blocks because we support it 
Yep. And I'm happy to try to throw this code up somewhere if anybody wants to um, test it out. Happy to do that. Yeah, that's cool. We can put it in the in the uh, blog post. I'll keep wanting to say show notes. Kind of is. Um, is there any more? Any other questions? Any other? Uh, it doesn't have to be related necessarily to the interactivity API. Any burning questions around ACF? Any issues people are having or any? Anybody's tested out the beta of 6.3? Um, any issues? Feel free to unmute or just to get in the chat. Uh, hi, guys. I, I joined on the the last dev chat uh, previous time asking about kind of more native fields for Gutenberg. Um, after that, I kind of fired up Gutenberg again after kind of just using classic editor and ACF flexible layouts. Got quite far, you know, set up a few custom ACF blocks, had inner blocks, kind of context set up. And then I was kind of getting to the point where I needed to add slideshows, accordions, modals. And to me, I just think the the paradigm of kind of visual editing doesn't really fit for more complex designs. I was kind of wondering if ACF were ever going to kind of take the middle ground somewhat and almost just improve the classic editor view because it looks like obviously WordPress isn't going to add anything to that but for our needs kind of ACF flexible layouts is basically perfect maybe yeah. if you had a preview of what you were editing yeah that could be could be nice a bit more of a kind of modern interface it is all looking a bit tired and a little bit old um but yeah, I was just wondering, I don't know if you guys have metrics on your side of kind of how many people have switched to Gutenberg, whether you think it it fulfills the need for the kind of professional developers. Well, I kind of see that they're going to end up almost getting to a point where it's going to end up being a bit like Webflow, where there's always going to be something that they need to add that it can't do, and you're just going to kind of get to the point where it's very, very complex, but not necessarily always fit for fit for purpose yeah yeah and ian i apologize i i owe you an email reply um you you track me down in person virtually um <laughs> yeah i mean this is something we wrestle with a lot um we we're committed to improving the block editor experience for acf users who are wanting to use acf blocks with the block editor uh and obviously keeping compatibility with whatever the block editor and WordPress Gutenberg keep building with. But we also know that there's plenty of people using the more classic template approaches with flexible content. You know, we, we've, we've got a diverse uh, group of different ACF users building different types of sites. And, and I, I don't think that's going any away anytime soon. Um, okay. And in answer to your sort of, specific question around the flexible content field we do plan improvements to that and you know you're right it probably has it does need some love um and there's improvements that can be done there to just to make it a bit more polished and a bit more usable um because it's still it's not something that we don't look at that and think that's something we're not going to support anymore because it's completely antiquated by everything that people that the block editor is doing because actually it's still a really valid way of building sites and there's still a ton of agencies, freelancers, you know, solo devs out there building with that because it it meets the needs for their clients and it meets the need of budget, time constraints and all of that. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're still going to carry on building and supporting it. Um, I don't know what if when you mentioned going in the more middle ground around improving the classic editor, I don't think that's not something that we're thinking about at the moment. Um, because it is quite difficult to, you know, how WordPress is going towards the block editor. I think we need to, we need, we, we've got the tool set around the flexible content field and things that work in the classic editor that we can, we can improve on. But I think unless WordPress suddenly turned around and said the classic editor plug in and therefore the classic editor is going away in two major versions of WordPress, 
then maybe we'd have to think differently about that question. But I don't see how that is going to be a uh, a reality anytime soon from a WordPress core perspective. Um, so we'll just continue supporting ways of building with the classic editor and ways of building with the, the block editor. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's I'm definitely, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's, I was just working on another uh, Shopify job, building a custom template for that. And I think they've taken that kind of middle ground of the two that works very well. You're not actually editing the content on the page, but you have a preview and there's a sidebar with the custom fields. You define, it's very much like a ACF layout, but you define it in JSON and then you get the fields in the sidebar. You can visually see what you're composing, but you're not kind of battling, trying to kind of A, build a front end component and a back end, having markup that changes, having CSS for the editor and the front end. It's kind of the, the best of both in a way, which is almost a bit of a hybrid between where ACF is and where Gutenberg is at the minute. Yeah. Cool. I was just going to say, like, I'm definitely more of a classic editor person myself. Um, I greatly prefer it to blocks most of the time. But um, I do think that ACF blocks are a good sort of middle ground in between working with blocks and block editor. Um, because you can just use PHP and regular HTML and, you know, traditional JS for a lot of the stuff that you're doing. Um, and it, at that point, I think it's pretty similar to things like um, the flexible content field, because you can just have a couple ACF blocks, you know, one with the slider or what have you. Um, and you you can just have like a preview of those blocks and then work in the sidebar if you want to, um, to update the field values. So I think it, it is still, I still prefer classic editor and using things like that. And I'm probably the lone person who thinks this way on the team, but I could definitely see the value in just sticking with blocks a little bit and you can lock the posts down so that they can only have certain blocks or templates or what have you um, and kind of get closer to that, you know, middle ground experience where you're still just, you know, working with PHP and traditional templates and that sort of thing. Um, but also using the newer features of the Gutenberg editor. Yeah. I think my, I got fairly far along that line and then my gripe was just the, the kind of markup in <laughs> the HTML markup in the editor was different. So then I started to having to write JS code for the editor and then same with the styling. Then I was like, hold on, <laughs> I'm just going to switch back to classic editor. And then when I did, you know, it's, it's just so much more efficient, but maybe that's me because it's workflow and what I'm familiar with. Yeah. Which is the trick, the tricky thing when it comes to the change, because if it works and what you do means that you can get it done at a reasonable pace, then it's harder to then justify learning new ways, new workflows, new ways of building. Um, but what Matt touched on about the flexible content field, the way you can build ACF blocks um, for the block editor that is, you know, a similar, it's comparable to a building with flexible content field. I think we we mentioned it last time, we, we were sorely due some documentation around like converting that workflow um, and not in the way that we want people to do that, but only this is just the best way to do it if that's something you want to do. Um, because, yeah, that they are very similar, but obviously different being a classic way and a block way. Um, but you can kind of still get the same uh, level of control for developers and level of editing for the clients um, without having to go in and build, you know, com layouts from scratch from small amount of components. Um, we are, we, we're at time actually, so I don't want to take up uh, too much more of everyone's time. Thank you, Damon, for doing your um, demo. That's been really helpful. Uh, Thanks thank for you having everyone me. for coming. Um, we, I mean, we, we're around on Twitter. We're around on the support forums. If you've got any other questions that you think of afterwards, or we'll be, you know, around in a couple of weeks time. 
but yeah let's wrap up there thank you very much for coming and yeah see you in two weeks cheers everyone bye